So I'm between you and more interesting speech of our um, uh, on, on, honorable guest, uh, Baldwin Ketterly. And I'm going to talk about why we're starting this university very quickly and the main scenes about it. So uh, first of all, I want to introduce, reintroduce Acronis. We are based here in this office. We are in Schaffhausen in some form from 2008. We um, incorporated and declared that this is a headquarter from 2010. We were founded in Singapore and we have dual headquarters now. Uh, we are medium-sized software company, $250 million in revenue, but we are growing very rapidly, 50%. And more importantly, unlike many companies, we are not decelerating, but accelerating. So we grew 20% last year, 30% this year, and we'll grow 50% in 2020. Uh, we have 1.5 thousand people, almost every company in the world uses our software. Uh, we have 500,000 business customers, we have 50,000 partners. We only do business through partners, we do not sell direct. 5.5 million prosumers will probably protect uh, several tens of millions of uh, workloads, which is mostly computers and servers. We do business in 150 countries, so almost every country in the world is in 40 languages, and we are based in 33 places. This is our headquarter, and we're proud that this is our headquarter, but we are just about everywhere. What do we do? Cyber protection. What is cyber protection? Something which is needed, amazingly, by every person, every organization in the world, that is making sure that your application data and system are protected from the standpoint of safety, nothing gets lost, accessibility, everything can be accessed at all times, anywhere. Privacy, you know who accessed it and what did they do with it, you can take back the rights to access it. Authenticity, so it's not modified without your knowledge. And of course, security, so there is no bad guys who break it. And recently, <coughs> we were able to close um, a round of funding at above $1 billion. So we're technically uh, the first unicorn out of Schaffhausen. Uh, we are over a billion dollar market cap. We are well funded, so we will uh, accelerate our growth in the future, yes. Acronis is the main source of my capital, and I'm the main source at the moment of a capital for SIT, so it's important to some extent. Now, I want to go real fast through this presentation because there's a lot of slides, and so first thing is um, uh, pretty obvious, is that by now we all think about universe, everything which surrounds us as a computer. It's a sort of a quantum computer which performs a very complicated quantum calculation from the computation from the beginning of the universe. I recommend that you read these three books if you want to learn about it more. And I also recommend that you watch this video uh, lectures by uh, Scott Aronson, one of our friends who was a professor at MIT, who is currently in the University of Texas, and uh, he have just recently um, read three one-hour lectures about computing and computation in ETH in Zurich nearby, right after visiting Schaffhausen and talking to us. But what does it mean? That means one very interesting thing. If the universe is a computer, with the right computer, we can predict and maybe even manipulate the universe. And this is sort of an example of how we are much better today about predicting the weather. This is a um, recent hurricane, um, I forgot which one it is, Hurricane Dorian, which just happened, I think, uh, this year. And, and um, we were able to predict this hurricane and prepare for it and, and minimize the damage from it. It's not predicted precisely. In fact, initially it was very scary. My parents live in Boca Raton, Florida, and I almost evacuated them, so Boca Raton is somewhere here. But it actually turned and moved away, but it's predicted pretty well. And the reality is that there is many, many problems in the world which are um, in, in front of us. Wars and violence, environment and global warming, spreading of poverty, disease and aging, space and universe challenges that we want to actually be able to travel to space because if we don't, at some point, this Earth will become uninhabitable. And all of those problems can be solved if we have better computers. If we have proper computers, we can model the nature, we can model the society, we can model the human behavior, we can even potentially model human brain, which is sort of most favorite problem of all, which may address the first one and the third one, and we can solve those problems. We cannot solve them because we don't have the right computers. That's my view of it. Now, um, we know that uh, conventional computers, which we use today, which um, enabled us to be much more successful, which fueled our economic growth over the past 30 years, 
are uh, facing uh, three challenges. The first challenge is performance and through output is limited. We know already there are physical limits to how much computation you can perform on digital computers. There is uh, limitations on power. You cannot really have too much power in a single uh, cubical centimeter. Uh, there is too much electricity spent which is needed for some computations. And finally, you, can, you have the limitations of size. You cannot have a computer which is larger than the size of the Earth, or larger than the size of Juniper. Uh, and so definitely there are limitations and there are very simple problems and I just listed two problems here. One of them is a many body problem in physics which is basically a problem of the fact that today we have, we believe we have all the equations to model how the, na the matter behave. And so we can actually model the physics if we were to be able to solve those problems, but those problems are uncomputable with large enough number of atoms or particles. Uh, you know, with several hundred particles, it's already impossible today. With several thousand particles, it doesn't look like it's gonna be possible in any time in the next, um, uh, say, uh, 10,000 years or ever. And then the other problem, which is even more simple, is a factorization of numbers, which is underlying the security of the internet and security of information technology, all of our encryption and all of our decryption and all of our privacy is based on the fact that when you multiply two, two large numbers, demultiplying them is a hard problem to solve. Now, again, these two very simple problems cannot be solved on um, digital computers. There is a lot of progress on building new computers which have completely new um, ways to solve some of those problems. There is neuromorphic computers which are much better designed to solve certain optimization problems which are very important to model human brain and human behavior to build better deep learning and machine learning engines which can be smarter and cleverer and more creative than today. There are photonics computers which are uh, much better in power efficiency, potentially uh, much higher frequency for some problems or potentially thousands times or hundreds of times faster. Uh, there are quantum computers and up until 10 years, up until probably last year, it was looking like a theoretical exercise. I would talk to scientists in Harvard, in ETH, in Oxford, in Cambridge, and all those scientists will tell me like, okay, Hampton Computers is a very interesting concept. They might be built at some point in the future, but not so soon. And when you ask the scientists, most careful will say 25 years. Some of them will say anywhere from five to 50 years. But we have quantum computers built this year which are faster than any uh, physical com digital computers for certain types of problem. There are computers which can be built on advanced materials um, which solve certain problems of nature, again, much better than anything we can do digitally. All of those computers are in process of being built, in process of being useful, in process of being uh, created in order to solve some of those problems listed on the previous slides, and of course, we have one major problem of human existence. We actually, as a scientist, research the universe and we think about the universe as a major challenge. We think about how small we are in comparison to the universe while we are carrying the most complex sub-object in the universe in our head. And so this object is human brain and being able to augment human brain, to connect to human brain better, to improve the performance of human brain is something which is a major scientific and technological challenge and something which can again significantly improve our lives. Well, if we want to build those computers, we cannot build them by doing just one thing. For those computers, we need some new advanced materials. To build these computers, we need some materials which do not exist in nature and, and that is one area of research, science and technology. To build these computers, we also require new hardware. This is a picture of IonQ quantum computer, which is probably the most advanced quantum computer available today, albeit not so publicized, but perhaps would be very publicized in 2020. 2020 is probably the year of this type of quantum computer based on called ions. So this is a hardware. It's just a piece of the part of the hardware which is needed to operate this very small quantum part of the computer. People typically write in the media that quantum computers must be very expensive to build. In reality, they are much cheaper uh, than uh, largest uh, computer, uh, computer clusters of Google. Then you need new software to design those computers. Those computers 
the modern progress in um, integrated circuits are, is enabled by software which is used by companies like Intel, Qualcomm, Samsung to design new integrated circuits. And this software is getting better and better and better and because of that every year we have improvements in our ARM and x86 processors, in our GPUs and in our CPUs. And, and this software is very sophisticated and very specialized in order for us to build those computers on the previous page, we need to build completely new software. And also, you need to create new operating systems to run these computers. Those computers do not run in the same way as modern computers today. And of course, you need to also digitize and program these new algorithms to solve some of those problems listed on the previous slide, like creation of new materials or modeling, um, uh, modeling nature or modeling human brain. And so because of that, we decided to build a new university. And this new university is focused on computers, physics, and business. It will have to be making money because we are blessed to build it in Schaffhausen. And Schaffhausen is a canton which is not large enough to be able to fund a university of a size of ETH or um, of a quality of um, uh, EPFL by itself. And so we will have to be sustainable. This is some of the parameters of the university, some of the amount we commit to invest in the university and the revenue and the number of new jobs we can create here. And the university, of course, is not just a university, just like it was mentioned by, my, by Christian. We, we will uh, build a university which will have 2,000 students on campus, 20,000 students which will come to campus and 200,000 degree students. We will also build a research center focused on all those areas and we will build Tech Park which will be enabling companies to have research centers next to the university and uh, leverage university expertise. Now, we believe that the universities of the future can be built in a completely different and a completely more unique way than they're built today. And one of the differences is that we can have a distributed university where the main campus and main science will be in Schaffhausen, but we will have a scientist, uh, we will have a separate campuses for uh, blended students where students can come and study and we will have a campuses for students who are more comfortable in studying in those places. Eventually we see five campuses. Uh, if the student comes to campus three times a uh, semester, it must be cost efficient and convenient enough. And so there is one campus in Asia, one in Eastern Europe, one probably somewhere in Mediterranean and one somewhere in Americas for the students while the main campus is here and that's where we will do more than 50% of all core science and research. Now the areas we want to focus on is exactly these three areas, computers, physics and business. And we are very specific on which parts of those um, uh, disciplines we want to do. It's cybersecurity and information integrity, artificial intelligence and machine learning. It is software engineering and robotics and autonomous machines. All of those areas are undoubtedly hot areas. You can build almost nothing today without this kind of computer science. In physics, there are two areas which are very basic research uh, heavy areas, yet producing very much applied uh, results. And, and those areas are quantum technology and advanced materials. In both of those directions of research, you can do base, basic research, you can get a Nobel Prize, and I would believe there will be many more Nobel Prizes issued for people uh, who achieve some discoveries in, in these areas. And then in business, everything in business today can be done as science. We do not want to compete with a wonderful and sort of a hidden jewel of this part of Switzerland, St. Gallen, which is a great business school. But we want to build a university which is focused on science of business. Science of business is digital health, new generation business management, digital law, um, uh, digital sport, digital learning, and um, education, which is a very important part of the core of our value proposition. And finally, uh, digital art and design. And I want to point out that one of the things which I can talk for a very long time how our university is different, but one of the areas we are different is that we believe that it's very important to be interdisciplinary. For example, one thing which we do, which is cool in our university, we do it for marketing, we do it for research, we do it for development, is we created our own robo race team, which is autonomous racing team, which, compete, which is a team which is a competition between cars without drivers, one day with drivers, one day without drivers. To build an autonomous car, you actually need all those areas. And, and in fact, my, my uh, um, helper who helped me to build this PowerPoint, he forgot one area, so it's 
cyber security information integrity. It's very important for autonomous cars. If you can hack to autonomous into autonomous car, you can do a lot of damage. Artificial intelligence and machine learning. Autonomous cars have to be artificially smart, and they have to make decisions. They have to use computer vision uh, to, to understand what happens on the road. Software engineering, effectively autonomous car is a computer which is on the wheels and drives. Robotic and autonomous machines, well, by definition, Quantum technologies, quantum sensors are required to actually see the road and see where you are and judge the conditions better. Quantum sensors and perhaps elements of quantum computers are the only way to do it in real time. Advanced materials are needed uh, to make many parts of those cars better. And of course you need to manage the businesses which make autonomous cars. And of course uh, this is a digital sport which is complete percent conducted in numbers and of course, you also have to have beautiful cars. And one area which is forgotten here is digital law, because once you have autonomous vehicles on the street, you need to change the regulation. You have to figure out how to judge the accidents and how to judge the speed limit brakes and so on and so forth. And it's very different if you don't have a driver. Who's responsible? The person who programmed the car, the person who configured the car, the person who built the car, the person who built the regulation. It's much more complicated. And this is only possible with interdisciplinary approach. And one difference with this university is we want to make it possible for a student to be master at the same times in computers, physics, and business. Uh, so what we have today, we have today a very representative strategic advisory board. We were able to attract those wonderful um, scientists. Kostya Novoselov is a Nobel Prize winner in physics. He is 44 years old. He's based in National University of Singapore. He is inventor of graphene advanced material. Nicolas Jezan, quantum communication expert and quantum physicist, probably one of the most cited living physicists out of Switzerland today. Arthur Eckert, another person who is very deep in quantum communication. He created quantum communication protocol. He is a professor in National University of Singapore and Oxford, head of Singapore Quantum Center. Me, Michael Lukin, my classmate from the university I graduated with, who is a professor of Harvard, who was the person who introduced me to Wolfgang and Mark Kamlet, who is our expert in administrating education. He was a provost of Carnegie Mellon. He started with Carnegie Mellon, which he, when it wasn't anywhere near the top 10 in computer science, and now it uh, depends on the year, it's either number two, or number one, or number three in computer science in different rankings. And we build this university naturally with these two universities in cooperation, National University of Singapore, I'm a Singapore citizen, I'm living in Singapore for 26 years, that's my home country. We have a great relationship and we have two people in this university which are leading two leading research centers with Carnegie Mellon, which is number three uh, in computer science based on the ranking last year. And we have Mark Kamlet, who is our um, board member and the former provost to help us with it. Uh, this is a partnership. We'll probably announce another one more partnership over the course of next three years and we'll build university together with these guys. We also rely on this group of scientists. Well, on this slide, we, we mostly have physicists, which is our friends and our network, which give us advice and help us like Wolfgang, who have done amazing job today helping us to promote this idea to children, to general public, and to you attending the this session. He is an expert in quantum systems. Jo David Gross, who is an expert in physics in general and uh, elementary particle physics, Vladimir Shalaev, who is actually professor of Purdue University and uh, expert in metamaterials. Ignacio Cirac, Peter Zoller, and Rainer Blatt, expert in quantum technology. Eugene Demler, theoretical physicist and sort of theorian of quantum technology and condensed matter. And on this slide, we have three Nobel Prize winners. So another Nobel Prize winner is Sir Under Game. Exactly the access to this excellent scientist, the top of the top of the top of the world. And by the way, I want to point out that they're not just Nobel Prize winners, these scientists. They're all involved in active research, and we certainly hope that Wolfgang will get another Nobel Prize for one or another of his quantum systems. We already formed the team. This is our current operation team. We, the team is based here in Schaffhausen. I am a founding president and a chairman. Uh, Christian is our Swiss contact. He's our board member. He's somewhere here. Where are you, Christian? He's over there. Uh, um, Jürgen Brucker, who's our executive vice president in charge of business development and many other things. Bertrand Meyer, uh, uh, who is our provost. He was a head of software engineering in ETH. My partner, uh, in Stanislav Pratasov, who is our industry relation expert. He is a head of all technical people in Acronis, leading 
over 1,000 technical people in Acronis. Dmitry, who is our, our VP of operations and strategy. Uh, Christian Garcia, who is our head of operations. Elena Novoselova, VP communications and grant management, and Mauro Peze. So we have two people here which are faculty, and we have a number of PhDs here. So I think we have one, two, three, four, five PhDs, six PhDs and in on board, which are all able to teach if necessary. Of course, at the moment, we plan only Bertrand and Mauro to be teaching computer science. We're actively looking for more members of our team, members of executive team, members of the faculty, members of administrative team. In all aspects of university, we have to be leading. And, you know, I, I mean, you before me, Christian, represent, uh, presented Schaffhausen. I think I want to point out that when we started this project, we started talking about university here uh, more than a year ago, probably around one and a half. We were facing a lot of questions. Why Schaffhausen? So what, why do you choose Schaffhausen? Why such a strange place? And I want to present that there is multiple reasons why Schaffhausen. So, of course, one of the reasons is that the headquarter of my company is here, and so I started coming here from 2007 or 2006. But besides that, Schaffhausen is uniquely well located between those wonderful airports. It's very close to Zurich Airport, just 37 kilometers. It's less than 30 minutes at night, and, and it's less than 30 minutes by the train. So it's very, very nice. <laughs> Right, and um, it's also an old city, it's nice, it's actually quite pleasant. That is very important for faculty and students. It's um, a very pleasant in the center, it's a city with history. It's not a very large city, so it's a city where you can actually be very comfortable and cozy. Uh, most of the scientists do not necessarily care to be in the middle of New York or middle of London. Today I had an interview with one of the journalists and I've asked why, why wouldn't you move to Schaffhausen, and um, the lady nicely said, like, uh, well, I love London. London is more cool. So for scientists, it's much more important to be effective and efficient, and Schaffhausen lends itself very well for it. And in fact, not only, but despite the fact that Schaffhausen is a small canton, it's also a canton where there is a very good industry. There is a manufacturing industry, there is precision manufacturing, there is chemical industry, there is research, there is, of course, famous companies and there is one company which is very close to my heart, which is, in fact, very famous watch company out of Schaffhausen. Right? It's a very famous watch company out of Schaffhausen. And which company is that? <laughs> right. No, the company is Moser. <laughs> and the Moser is very special for me because I was born in St. Petersburg. And as you would hear from the founder and CEO of Moser, well, of Moser to some extent, uh, you know, owner and CEO of Moser, uh, Edward Malon. Uh, Moser also has roots in St. Petersburg. Uh, Moser was born in Schaffhausen. He studied watchmaking. He tried to do it here, but he had to travel back to the place I was born in Soviet Union and made all the money, came back here and transformed the city, made it into industrial city of today. I certainly hope that I can contribute at least a a uh, small portion of what Moser did for Schaffhausen. With that, I want to invite the CEO of Moser to the stage. Eduard, please. Thank you.